with my buddy K State asks me, Hey, you seen this trailer for this movie called The Devil Conspiracy? So I take a look at it, and the premise of it, which had to do with like the Shroud of Turin extracting the DNA off of it, it reminded me of this movie I saw. It was actually almost like an identical plot line to this movie called Revelation. It was like a B film, came out around 2001, 2002, and it stars Udo Kier. Now, I never knew Udo Kier by his name, but he's been in a lot of movies. I know you've seen him in a bunch of movies, and he's been in 220 plus films. And so for that initial question of if I've seen this trailer for a movie that he's not in, The Devil's Conspiracy, reminded me of Revelation, which reminded me of Udo Kier, which in order to find Revelation, because I couldn't even remember the name of the movie, I looked up, I remember he was in Omega Code 2, Battle of Megiddo, or Omega Code 2 Megiddo, or the Battle of Megiddo, or Armageddon. Regardless, uh, that movie was wild, and just Udo Kier. So then I looked up his his filmography, and because I wondered, I was like, well, how come Udo Kier isn't like a household name if he's made 220 plus movies? Like, why is he not part of Hollywood? Like, when you look up most films people have been in, He's not on the top 10 list, even though there's people with 99 films, 100-something. But then they just gloss over Udo Kier. And I'm like, all right, all right, you could show that guy's picture to everybody. And everyone will say, oh, yeah, I've seen that guy in a movie. I don't know his name. But then I look up the movies in the early 70s, and they were called the Nasty Films or <laughs> something. It was labeled, I think, by the U.K. as Nasty Films. I assume this is before like the official MPAA rating system is there. So anyway, long story short, the early films of Udo Kier all deal somewhat with Western esotericism, which is the most polite word I can use for it. And then, So then I show this to a buddy of mine. Yeah, I'll call him the rock star. That's his nickname. And I forgot what he says, but whatever he told me, it made me think of Martin Luther. Not Martin Luther King, but Martin Luther from the Reformation, the guy that started the Reformation. And I sat back and I was like, who, who was behind Martin Luther? How could one guy basically disrupt Western civilization forever after? And because he's not really, I mean, everybody knows Martin Luther King, but, and some know Martin Luther. But his historical significance is tremendous. It is colossal in terms of Western Civ. And yet, he's not even like on the top 10 that you hear about. But in my position, in my view, Martin Luther is a top five most influential in Western civilization history. So then I start to look it up. Like, all right, how, how did one man, he, he's, like, he's like Jesus the man and Moses combined into one when you think about it. How did, how did one guy, one, one monk take down... Well, he didn't take down the entirety of the Catholic Church, but he, he, he single-handedly devastated the, world, the, the entirety of the worldview of the West. One guy with no army. So I'm like, all right, there's got to be something deeper here. W what is it? So I, I, I don't know. I started, I watched the uh, you know, uh, crash course. Sudden storm blew up, lightning struck him to the ground, and in a panic he cried, help me Saint Anne, I'll become a monk. On the Reformation or on Martin Luther. Now what I'm saying here, this is stretching things beyond all stretch, but for amusement and coincidence, it's kind of like, all right. So it says that Martin Luther, I guess he was from a well-to-do family, he was going to law school. But then as he, I guess he was walking out of the law school, he gets struck by lightning. Sudden storm blew up, lightning struck him to the ground, and in a panic he cried, help me, Saint Anne, I'll become a monk. And he, and he makes a pact, or he begs to Saint Anne to spare his life, and if so, he'll dedicate his life to, I guess, the monastery and become a monk. And little did we know, he would become the most influential monk of all time. But the name St. Anne kind of threw me off. So I didn't know this, and you probably didn't know this. St. Anne is Jesus' grandmother, so the mother of Mary. Never knew that. It's pretty interesting. Like, hey, who's Jesus' grandmother? Ah, oh, 
St. Anne. But if you really kind of think about this, Martin Luther got struck by lightning. He was begging to survive, and he pledged his life to the monastery if he could, if he could live. And he, he didn't beg to Virgin Mary. He begged to St. Anne. Now, if you kind of say St. Anne a little fast, Satan, Saint Anne, Satan. It's mean, okay? I'm stretching. But as I was watching the video on the Great Court or on Crash Course, it sure sounded like he said he prayed to Satan. Sudden storm blew up, lightning struck him to the ground, and in a panic he cried, Help me, Saint Anne, I'll become a monk. But Saint Anne. I mean, could it couldn't how, how, what's the coincidence there that Mary's mother would be named Anne and would become a saint for Saint Anne? Saint Anne. Hey. So, Saint Anne miraculously cures Martin Luther from being electrocuted by lightning. And he goes on with the power of Saint Anne to create the Reformation. So then as we're talking more, I said, you know, I've always been skeptical of Thomas Paine. I mean, really, how did, how did he, how did he get the, well, I guess Common Sense wasn't even attributed. It was like an anonymous book. But I was like, it's got to be a hidden hand behind Thomas Paine. Now, some say it was Benjamin Franklin because he was the head of the printing press, which, you know, we kind of overlooked that too, that Benjamin Franklin was in control of the printing press, which means he was basically in control of, what gets printed, and and there's that. But then somebody sent me this documentary that talks about this guy named Charles Thompson. Now, I say to myself, how have I never heard of Charles Thompson? He was the secretary from 1773 to 1789. He's also the designer of the, the seal, the great seal on the dollar bill. He's also the one that put Novus Ordo Seclorum on the, on the dollar bill. He's the guy that actually went to George Washington's house to let him know that he is the president. And he served, like, for 14 years. This guy is, like, the hidden emperor of the pre-USA. And I've never heard of Charles Thompson until today when trying to find out who was behind Thomas Paine. Now, I don't know if... Oh, <laughs> and as I'm looking it up... He wrote a thousand pages to enter into, I don't know, I think it was the Library of Congress or the Congressional Record or something, and he decided to destroy it all. It was the actual, like, real history of the American Revolution. And since a better story came out, he said, I don't want to undeceive people of the original, of what really happened. They're better off thinking, and not only the people of the United States are better off thinking, but the whole world over is better thinking of the story, the legend that came out of this about the revolution than what actually happened. So I won't undeceive them. So somewhere there's a thousand pages of some hidden history. Now, that kind of made me think of the book by Robert Heinlein, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, because it's kind of like, all right, it, it's kind of actually the book is like a metaphor for the American Revolution and what do you do on the day after when everybody wants to get paid. But even the circumstances that led up to it, I almost wonder if it's based on, I, I'm not saying it is, I just wonder if it's based on Charles Thompson's thousand pages that he destroyed, supposedly destroyed. You know, and when, sometimes when people say things are destroyed, you wonder, was it really destroyed or was it passed amongst various secret societies. So like, for instance, the, the, the burning of the library at Alexandria. It's like, did they really burn it down or is everything that was at the library at Alexandria in the Vatican basement right now? All right, so to recap, we covered Udo Kier and his wacky early film history, Martin Luther and St. Anne, the movies Devil Conspiracy, Revelation, Omega Code Megiddo, how those all got connected, uh, Charles Thompson and the 1,000 Missing Pages, but uh, also... <laughs> Let's just take a look real quick at Udo Kier's early film history because I didn't touch on it earlier. So you have you have Road to St. Tropez, Shameless, La Stignione de Sensi, Mark of the Devil, Ol Erotomanus, Provocation, 
Antlex Amortolis, The Salzburg Connection, Flesh for Frankenstein, Pan, Blood for Dracula, The Last Word, Story of O, Expose, Goldflocken, Spermula, Suspiria, The Fifth Commandment, The Third Generation, Hungarian Rhapsody, Narcissus and Psyche, Lulu, Dr. Jekyll and Les Femis, Lola, The Island of the Bloody Plantation, The Roaring Fifties, Moscow on the Hudson, The Invincible, Seduction, The Cruel Woman, Egomania, Epidemic, so pretty bizarre. Anyway, thanks for watching this episode. I hope it provided some kind of entertaining enlightenment for you. It was just a, a wacky morning where one thing led to another and the Wikipedia rabbit hole ensued.